The city is constrained by Okanagan Lake on the north, Pendicton Indian Reserve on the west, Skaha on the south, and the ALR to the east. Growth is constrained by these entities. The original Serpentine Okanagan River was the boundary when the district municipality was formed in 1908. This is approximately 1950. The airport was built as a wartime project on Pendicton Indian Reserve number one. Okanagan River with its vibrant riparian and fish habitat is not yet confined to a flume. Orchards and farm fields are all that exist at this point on Skaha Flats. This is the northern half of the city, the populated part in 1936 showing the Kettle Valley Railway, the CPR, the Y on the reserve where the railway goes south to Asuyas or west to Vancouver, Hugh Lear Sawmill is on the river where logs were floated down a river to the log pond. Most of the developed part of Penticton is north of Ellis Creek. In 1910, the first manipulation of the river takes place with the Dominion Government Bridge and Pile Driver making cuts across the more twisting sections of the river rocks bows to make the river navigable by steamboats. Shatford, Dallas, Troy, Athens, and Alice South Branch feed the river. All are fish bearing streams. Between 1892 and 1936, most of Penticton is developed between Okanagan Lakeshore and Ellis Creek. The CPR encouraged tourism, so built its Incola Hotel on the beach across the street from the Penticton station and the steamship and railway docks. This is the Sycamuse and the Tug Naramata at the foot of Martin Street. Flood concerns in the valley as well as Penticton had the Dominion government build and create the Okanagan River Channel in 1953. This is one of the cutoffs created in 1910. Orchardists complained that beavers at the foot of Okanagan Avenue were cutting down young fruit trees. There have been three dams on the river. The first was a stop log structure built in 1908 to let small steamboats pass. This is the second dam built in the 1920s. At that time, the river ran through the Rose Garden, then on the east side of the skateboard park and into the new river at Coyote Cruises Landing. There were at least three major floods, as well as some minor flood events in the 20s and 30s, and finally a major one in 1948. This is Eckerd Avenue by Penticton High School. Every flood inundated downtown business sections and destroyed over a dozen homes on Lower Ellis Street over a four-decade period. Penticton Creek was the main offender. With help from the senior governments, Penticton Creek was confined to a concrete flume with some 35 drop structures to control the velocity of the spring freshet. It solved the flood problem, but killed a vibrant salmon and trout stream. The federal government, in conjunction with the United States International Columbia River Treaty Agreement, channelized 90% of the river between Okanagan Lake and Asuyas Lake. The water table and flood control allowed for the filling in of the marshlands to create housing on both sides of the new river. This is Red Wing uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. In 1953, a third dam was constructed. This allowed the relocation of Highway 97 off of Lakeshore Drive and onto a new bridge at the west end of Eckerd Avenue. Channelization then destroyed most of the wetlands between Okanagan and Skaha Lake, leaving only a stagnant remnants of the original vibrant river. This is a 1954-55 image showing a vibrant downtown. Okanagan Lake has been filled in with road waste at Martin Street to create Rotary Park. Packing houses are busy there. There were five bulk oil plants, a chemical manufacturing plant, cannery, freight sheds on the town line. There are two rail transfer docks and to carry rail barges up the lake. In 1926, the Canadian National Railway had its own yards east of the creek servicing a bulk oil plant cattle yards, wholesale businesses, ice plant, packing houses, and a bottling plant. Now it's a Marino Park way. 1953 still had Penticton pretty well restricted north of Ellis Street, Nanishing Creek. To the right of the photo can be seen several sawmills, Penn Mill, Leyden Aranda, Yellow Lake Sawmills, and Clark's. The railway at its peak employed over 400 people. Penticton was a terminal point for the barge service. This is the MV Okanagan getting a cleanup and a safety check on the shipways just 100 feet or so north and west of the Merganza restaurant at the foot of Martin Street. The last tug worked in February of 1973. The tug's cradle is still in the lake. 
1950 intersection of Main and Westminster and Front Street. Shanghai Alley is on the right behind the 200 block Main Street. Light industry inhabits Lower Ellis Street and Robinson Lane with Clark's building supplies making up land use. The present City Hall location is a retail business area in the 1940s Art Deco style hall is just next to Gyro Park. Lakeshore Drive in 1950 was still a quiet place to relax. The aquatic club built about 1914 is in the bay. Behind is the industrial waterfront. The Ancola Hotel still holds a prominent position. By 1927, and the movement of retail and tourist activity has moved from the foot of Vancouver Hill to the 100, 200, 300 block Main Street and Lakeshore Drive. By 1980s, the region south of Ellis Creek to Skaha Lake is transformed with shopping centers named for the orchards that once existed there. Fujita's Farm is now a trailer park. Meadows that once produced hay for dairy farms now holds homes and schools. Much has changed since this 1915-era Kodak moment of Skaha's northeast bay. In long times past, the river flowed into this area. Up until the 1960s, remnants of the old river still could be seen before Yorkton, Elm, and Lee Avenue filled in the marsh. 110 years of manipulation of the land has brought us to where we are today. Where, we'll be, where will we be 10 years from now, let alone another 100 years in the future? Will Skaha still be there? Knowing where we've come from will help guide us into the future. Thank you.